Hi, my name is Wabuli Guru, and thank you for tuning in. Uh, in this video, I want to talk specifically about the Baby Basics Pack because that's what I'm getting a lot of questions about. It is our newest product, and um, so there's a lot of curiosity. So today, I just want to um, enlighten us a little bit more about what the pack contains and the idea behind the Baby Basics Pack. So um, you've probably seen the cover already online and if not welcome this is the cover for the baby basics pack and as with all uh, my resources for children under three they do come with very thick paper so you shouldn't worry about your child tearing them up okay for the 12 months and younger they, they will put them in their mouth and stuff like that but that is all part of learning um, we just need to teach them that we don't eat our resources we don't eat there's some things that we don't put in our mouths and by the time they get to older two they'll stop putting their papers in their mouth and, and everything in their mouth so this is the baby basics pack and it's ideally for children between the age of 12 months and 24 months so the period of one year now i do know that there are children with special needs who are using the pack and um, this is a great way to also assess how much a child knows um, for those children with special needs. And even for older children, a pack like this will help you understand how, how well does my child know colors? How many colors does my child really know? Not just name them, can they point them out? Can they identify different letters and things like that? So that's what this pack does. So for the younger children, it introduces the concepts for the older children, it's a good way to assess what your child actually knows and what they don't know. So um, that was a cover. I will show you now that my resources usually come with a letter, which I advise parents to read. Um, it is a bit lengthy. I guess I talk a lot. Um, but it does have content that you need to be able to use this pack successfully. And um, you're welcome to use the pack as flexibly as you want. This is what I recommend, but you do what works best for your child. So in the pack, it will, it will, in the letter, it will tell you what the idea is. So the idea is to have a five minute session for the 12 months. And as you grow older, you can increase it up to 10 minutes, um, depending on your child's ability to concentrate. And the idea is that the, the ability to concentrate and sit still and engage will increase as they continue to practice those skills. Just like with any other um, thing we do, what we practice is what we learn and we're able to do. So the idea is to spend five to 10 minutes, maximum 10 minutes with the child. And this can be broken up into, like if you're doing 10 minutes, you could do um, five in the morning and five in the evening or in the after, after the afternoon sleep. It's best to work with children when they've just woken up. And if you've watched uh, most of my videos, you see that Njoki is still in her pajamas because she wakes up with a burst of energy and I like to take advantage of that energy. So I don't wait until she's had breakfast and she's played. So usually she'll have her breakfast um, or part of it. Sometimes she just has a um, bottle of uh, cup of milk and then we start and then she has her breakfast later or as we go so the idea is get the child when they're freshest because that's when they learn and if they're not willing to learn at that time do not force the child the whole idea is learning is fun learning is fun and learning is hands-on so they need to be able to touch the products they need to be able to enjoy the products they need to be able to move around so it's not about constraining them to a chair um, if they're willing to sit, that's okay, but allow them to be the child they are as you teach. So, as I was saying, um, the, the, the idea is five to ten minutes a day. I, I say four days a week, so that you have two days if you have younger children of actually teaching. So, two days, and I'll show you the resources of let's say you're doing colors. So, Monday, okay, for Njoki and I, we don't learn on Mondays because we're usually very tired um, over the weekend because of the weekend activities, but that depends on your family, whichever days you choose. So 
let's just say, for example, you do Monday and Tuesday of teaching. So on that day, you'll teach the child the colors using the wall posters, and I'll show you that. On the third and fourth day, you use the hands-on cutout material where you have the child show you what they have learned. And this should be a very relaxed setting. If your child hasn't gotten it, it is still your job to teach them. And the idea is to do the same activity and for the whole week. Um, and that way, by the end of the week, they should start to, to have an idea of what, what you're teaching. Um, and that is the same concept that I use with the curriculum for two to three year olds and the curriculum for four to five year olds. So the idea is that we want them to master a concept instead of just having so many different ideas all at the same time. It's not about quantity of knowledge, it's about the quality of knowledge that your child has. And it's about having the foundation set right. So um, it might look like it's a bit boring, but keep a whole week on one concept so that your child has a chance to absorb it. So the second thing, um, that the pack has, I won't even count them because I know I get confused, is a, a daily routine um, program sort of. So this helps you as the parent know, okay, what, what do I do? So my child is ready to learn and we're, we've sat and, and I, what do I do? So the idea with teaching children under fives is you must be prepared. You can't sit and decide, okay, I will sing a song and you don't have a song in mind because by the time the child is waiting for you to figure that out, they've gotten up and they've gone. Life has moved on. So ideally prepare the day before, know which song you're going to sing. So the routine says, um, you start with a Bible song. Again, my resources are Bible based um, and I don't uh, push my own content, uh, my own uh, philosophies and my own theology. So like with this one, you get to choose which song you think is, is um, suitable for your family and you sing it with your child um, online you can find lots of songs bible based action songs are really good for children at this age so you could choose a song related to the theme of your your week so the topic you choose to cover that week you choose a song for that and sing that song the whole week or, or get a couple of songs depending on your child's ability to to go through a session with you so so you do the Bible song, then I, I like to introduce, a, a, because it's Bible based, a concept. And with, with these young children, we'll be looking at the Beatitudes, because this is all about behavior and how to, to live right and how to behave right. So these are wall posters that you can put on the wall, or if you don't want to put them on the wall because it's more content for the parent, you could put them in a folder so that you you have the routine you're aware of the routine um but the child gets to see i like to show and i've always shown jockey what i'm reading and what where words come from and where letters come from so i'm not just reading to her so like she, she didn't get to use this part but we will use some of this material so like this i will definitely put this up on the wall and teach it to her i've used the good news bible on this because it's very easy so it says things like happy are those who uh, it's the typical beatitude. So happy are those who know they are spiritually poor. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. And um, you'll see in the letter, I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So just read the Bible to them um, and let God be the one to teach them. So the part comes with the beatitude. So, in the, so we sing an action song. Then we, we read for them the Beatitudes and try to be animated and try to be fast. Not too fast that they can't get it, but at least try to, to get them to hear something. And I would advise you don't have to go through the whole thing every day. You could choose a few lines and stop somewhere. Again, prepare where you're going to stop. And the next day, keep doing that. And this, it, you use this over and over again. So eventually the child will learn. And the idea is that this helps to instill morals and you can as a child gets older, like by the time they're two, you can really now start to talk about what this, what it means. Um, so that's uh, the Beatitudes. Then there's the how do I feel? Now this is something that I'm passionate about because in the African culture, we don't 
really acknowledge our feelings, which becomes a problem as you grow older. So, and, and so I, I like to ask Joki, how are you feeling? How are you, are you okay? And all that. And whatever response she gives me, I respond to that. So I don't say, no, you shouldn't. Why are you sad? Or why are you crying? Or why are you, but in a reprimanding kind of way, but to help her understand that her feelings are valid. And then you help them work their way out of it. So because we're working with very young children, I've only chosen um, four feelings. And the idea is, after you've done the Beatitudes, you ask the child, how are you today? Are you, are you happy? Um, you can say because hopefully they're not crying or you're not crying and and these are children who most probably are not speaking yet so just speak as if they can speak back because their minds are able to, to comprehend um are you sleepy or are you sad and this will help them um gain language and also help them learn that it's they need to be telling you that you don't automatically know how they feel. They need to say it to you. So, um, and one of the successes of this, if I may just share, is that with Jockey, I can ask her, are you sleepy? Many times she'll say she's not, but when she's actually really tired, especially on Mondays, she'll actually say yes and start walking towards her room. So she's, she's, she's okay with being sleepy is not really a bad thing. And um, it's okay to be sad and it's okay to cry um just tell mommy why you're crying what's what's the matter what's wrong and it's all about how do i help you move to back to happy back to being happy so um i didn't have this post up on jockey but i will use this one with her she's already seen it and she's excited about it i like that one so then um sorry i went on for too long on that one but the next thing we do is the days of the week. So hopefully the child has told you they're happy or if they can't express themselves because they're young, you just say um, whatever the child's name is. Oh, Matthew is happy. Yay, mom is happy too. And that kind of, and, and as I was saying, try to be as animated as you can with these children. That's what makes learning fun. Um, then we, then you have the days of the week and this, um, is good because it starts to help children understand concepts of time. Um, now, see, I wasn't prepared. The days of the week are not as close as I thought they were. But these days of the week are also in the curriculum for two to three year olds. Um, and again, I've been using this idea with Njoki since she was 12 months. And right now, it's possible for me to tell her something like um tomorrow that's tomorrow she now knows not everything happens now and it might not mean tomorrow like literally tomorrow but she knows tomorrow is a time in the future so if she's asking for something um like you know when is she going to see her cousin i can tell her tomorrow and she's okay with that because she now has an idea of time as a concept of progression or you know different days so sometimes and especially when we're teaching children under two they are not able to tell us how much they're comprehending, but they do comprehend a lot of what we say. And so that's why we shouldn't speak to them in any baby, baby language. We shouldn't repeat the, the, the words they say, the way they say them. So if your child says, I don't know, let's say for milk, um, instead of saying milk, maybe they say Mimi or Mickey or whatever they say, don't say that back to them. Say the real word because in their mind, and in they, they, and their ears, they actually hear the same thing you said to them. So when you start to talk like them, they will lose the concept. They will start to talk like you. Who's talking like them doesn't work. So then you do the days of the week. And the days of the week comes with the days of the week song. Um, and you can find that song online. I've posted it, uh, I've created a poster for it. Um, and this is more for the parent and also for the child because the days of the week are also listed here. So you sing the song with the child and you say the days of the week and you point them out here or if you've, if you've cut out these ones, you can do them on this and cut them up and you point the days of the week with the child and uh, again, make it as animated as possible. Then you do the topic of the week. Now it sounds already like 
it may have taken 20 minutes or, or whatever. Wherever you reach, stop. You know, there's no hurry. I mean, where are they going? So you don't have to complete, there's no pressure to complete the day's activity. Do what works. If the child is done with songs and, and that's all they're willing to do, then stop there and let that go. And maybe in the afternoon or sometime later in the day, you could move on to the next activity. So the topics of the week, this part comes with, with um, seven topics. So there's the alphabet, so let's say alphabet, numbers, shapes, colors fruits, farm animals, and body parts. So I'll just show you one of them and maybe we'll look at um, the body parts because these are things children are learning at this point. Okay, I might just show you a bit of the others. So, just so that you get a map. You know, I feel like there's a helicopter pass. Let me just go back to pass. Okay, so. The body parts is, is one of the topics we do. So you get a poster of the body parts. Um, I'll just quickly show you the others. You have colors, we have fruits, and I'll just show you one more. Uh, we have shapes. And for all of this, there are just a few at a time, and they're the most common that the child will do. Oh no, so even with fruits, we only do six at a time. So these are the posters, and during the week of, let's say you're doing body parts, during that week, um, you have the poster up on the wall, or in a folder, or somewhere where the child can see it. The idea is, yes, I know that it's tricky to put stuff on the walls, especially, um, you're renting and you don't want to, to make a mess. I recommend blue tack highly because it doesn't, it sticks on the wall and you can pull it out anytime you want and it doesn't mess the wall. Um, so I would recommend that the week, so if we're doing body parts this week, we would have this poster out the whole week, which means any time of the day the child wanders into that space, your learning space, um, I also recommend you, you learn try and learn in the same space all the time so that the child starts to understand that the atmosphere in this space is a bit different. We, here we learn and, and it helps them concentrate. So that week we would have the body parts up on the wall. And during the first two days, your role is teacher. So you're teaching the child eyes and, the, and if the child can talk, say eyes, yeah, eyes, show me your eyes. And you point to your eyes, eyes. Now, at this age, they might not be talking, but behave as if you expect a, a response from them without pushing them. And how you do that is by asking them a question. Show me your eyes. What are these? Are these eyes? Eyes. And, and that's how they learn. When, when they know that you're actually expecting um, a response for them. I, I believe one of the reasons why children are delayed in speech is many times we talk for them we talk around them, yet about them. So we never, we're not having direct conversations with children, which means they, they don't really know what reaction we expect from them. And, and again, they're watching a lot of TV, and TV does not really expect a reaction from them. Or whether they react or not, TV does not change. The program still continues. So the more you engage a child in conversation where you're expecting a response from them, the more they start to understand that you know, I am supposed to talk. Mommy is expecting me to say something about it. And whatever they say, you encourage them and you get happy about it. So that, I don't want to make a long video. So the first two days, you, um, you teach the child. So you say, this is tummy or belly button. Show me your belly button. And you do that for two days. Um, then on the next two days, you have the same information, but this is a cutout sheet and there's a label there that says cut out sheet. Now the idea here is that you cut out each of these images and you give the child one at a time. So this poster is already up on the wall or in a, in a folder and you have cut out all these images and you give the child, let's say the eyes, and you give the child and say, these are eyes, can you show me eyes on, um, on the chart? Sorry, I haven't cut them up so uh, yet. 
So then you ask the child, can you show me the eyes? And this is what I was saying about it, understanding how much your child knows. Can your child distinguish that what they are holding, which is the eyes you have given them, are these and not these, or not this? So this is about visual discrimination. And if you've um, watched my other videos or know my resources, visual discrimination is a huge deal in learning because that's how they learn. They learn by knowing um, these are fingers and not toes, and they're able to see that those are two different items. And, and that all happens in their minds. You can't really explain all concepts to children. So you do that for a week and the seven topics. So this can take you seven weeks. It can take you longer than seven weeks and it can take you shorter than seven weeks. It really depends on how you and your child are progressing. The idea is you need to always make it fun. So um, don't, don't feel the pressure that your child has to know anything by a certain time. And that is not by any means the purpose of my resources. Why I find learning um, important in terms of parenting, I believe all parents should be engaging their children in learning because their minds are craving information they're, and they're, they're growing so quickly. But we are, we are spending more time um, for example, if you're not teaching your child, you spend more time, especially with toddlers, reprimanding them. You know, don't do that, do that. Or, or, or it's this hyper energy stuff that is not sustaining. You can't be hyper and rolling on the carpet every day with your child. Um, so let your child learn you in different facets. And um, from an education background, I think the, the most powerful position in a child's life is to be their teacher, to be the influence in their lives. And if you don't start early with teaching them that you are the teacher, that you, they, can, they get information from you, by the time you send them to school, um, you lost them. The teacher said, and the teacher knows everything. And so, so for some people, it would be the house help. No, auntie, most of us use auntie for the house help or the nanny. Auntie said no doing that. Auntie said no doing that. And as a parent, you're losing power. And all these other people are great in a child's life, but they're temporary. They're not gonna be there five years down the line. Your child needs to get instructions from you and understand instructions from you, understand values and morals from you before they go and take on what the world um, has. So the idea is not so much that the child will know, you know everything, like when they're doing the numbers, it's not so much that the child knows all the numbers. Um, the numbers one. Um, it's not so much that the child knows all the numbers. It's about does does the child have a positive relationship with you as they're learning? Does your child see you as an authority? Does your child love you as an authority, or they only love you when you're having fun um, and playing and and all that? And that way, you bond with your child in, in very many ways. The other thing about teaching your children, um, whether they go to school or not. But teaching them as a parent is you learn when they get frustrated because they will get frustrated. They'll, they'll get frustrated um, as like, for example, when we're matching these, like with the others, I use a little blue tag that I stick on here. So if the child is able to stick it on, it sticks. And you'll find that sometimes some children will be particular about it's not sitting straight, it's not that, and you can see them starting to get frustrated. And as a parent, doing creating opportunities where your child is, is, um, is uh, needs sort of to manage their behavior or manage to self-regulate, uh, so to speak, is a good opportunity for you to teach at a point where it's not, at the, they're already having a tantrum. Here you get an opportunity to see it build and say, okay, let's do it slowly. Let's try again. It's all right, don't worry, let's put it together. And that way the child starts to learn that some of these things that frustrate them are not that big a deal and they can chill about it and so teaching is not so much again about completing the exercise or the task it is more about creating that bond with the child that the child has a relationship with you that goes beyond their basic needs of feeding dressing and, and all that or reprimanding and naughty corner whatever discipline method you use or um you know just pure fun that you're all rounded. Yes, you're all those things as well, but you also have times when you can engage them very positively 
um, in a teaching manner. So I hope you got a bit of a feel of what this pack is. And so I'll try, I can do this quickly to show you them again. We do body parts, we do colors, there's um, the fruits. Oh, this is the cutout page for the fruits. Um, the shapes. Oh, I forgot. Um, then we do have letters, letter charts. Which I can't find now. <laughs> this is so weird. Um, I don't know where I put them. Anyway, we do have letters and numbers. The pack is in that big, I just don't know why I can't find them. Um, so before we, I forget that we were going through this, so then you have the weekly topic, so you do the colors, the fruits, or whatever you're doing that week, and we end with a prayer. So with the, with the baby basics, the prayer comes at the end. Um, with the two to three curriculum, or at least when I'm working with Njoki, I start with a prayer. And then we can do the singing, because she's a bit older now. She knows that the whole experience would be fun, so we don't just have to jump into singing and dancing immediately. Um, so we end with prayer, and I have put up um, the grace. For the two to three-year-old curriculum, we do the Lord's Prayer. Um, it's longer, and believe me, just keep doing it. Um, Joki is now two years, she turned two in September. And she's able to say the Lord's Prayer in her own funny way, but I can tell she's reached thy kingdom come. That will be that she, I know where she's at in her prayer. So if, if your goal for using these products is to instill Bible values and scripture in, in your child early, this is a good way to do it. So with the Baby Basics Pack, we do the grace. And with this pack, just at this point, you just say the grace and let your child understand that this is now how we end our teaching session. You say the grace and you say it for them. I, do, I prefer that you show them this is the grace that, you know, this is what we're doing, we're saying the grace. And you read it out for them. And that way they will, they will start to understand the routine of the learning session. By the time they get to two, you will be flowing through that other curriculum. And um, I get a lot of questions from parents about how Joki is able to sit still for that long, how she's able to concentrate. Um, I started teaching Joki when she was 12 months. So she's had a whole year of, of learning. So now that she's two and we're doing the two to three curriculum, she already knows the drill. She, she totally gets it and she gets excited about it. Not every day is she willing and excited to learn. Like I told you, for us, Mondays is a no learning day. That day, the most we'll do is color, if at all. Um, and that's just about knowing your child, know what they like, know what works. And understanding that it's all about your relationship with the child and that you're not, this is not about getting them to learn concepts to tick a box. This is about building a relationship with them that you want to last for years. So I welcome you to use the pack. I uh, recommend it to your friends. The pack costs 2,000 Kenya shillings plus the delivery costs, um, depending on where you're located. And that's it about Baby Basics Pack. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or if you think there's something missing from the pack, especially for parents with special needs, children, uh, please let me know what what areas you want um, us to look at and we can create a pack specifically for um, children with special needs or if there's something even if a child doesn't have special needs that you feel is missing from the pack please let me know and we can include that thank you and um, see you again later Bye.